In this video, we are going to discuss the concept of functions and its types. Now, what is a function? A function is a mathematical relationship between the dependent variable and independent variables. In a function, there can only be one dependent variable. However, there can be several independent variables. If y changes due to change in x, then y is said to be a function of x and the relationship is denoted by y equals f of x. Now in the function y equals f of x, y is the dependent variable and x is the independent variable. The dependent variable, as the name suggests, cannot change by itself and its value may vary with a change in the independent variable. An independent variable, however, may take any value. Alternatively, the independent variable x is also referred to as an argument of the function and the dependent variable y is also referred to as the value of the function. The set of all permissible values that the independent variable x can take in a given context is known as the domain of the function, which may be a subset of the set of all real numbers. The set of all values that y can take is known as the range of the function. Let us understand the concept of a function with the help of an example. y equals f of x which is equal to 2x. Let us assume that the independent variable x takes the value of greater than or equal to 1 and less than or equal to 3. So the domain of the function that is the set of values that x can take vary from 1 to 3. Let us now find the set of values that y can take. When x equals 1, the value of y is 2. When x equals 2, the value of y is 4. And when x equals 3, the value of y is 6. Therefore, the range of the function vary from 2 to 6. A function is also called mapping or transformation, which implies the action of associating one thing with another. The y value into which the x value is mapped is called the image of that x value. So the image of 1 is 2, the image of 2 is 4, and the image of 3 is 6 for the function y equals to x. Let us now look at the different types of functions. There are broadly two types of functions. They are the algebraic functions and the non-algebraic functions or transcendental functions. Under algebraic functions, we have the explicit and implicit functions, polynomial functions, and rational functions. Under non-algebraic functions, we have the exponential functions, logarithmic functions, and trigonometric functions. Now, what is an algebraic function? A function consisting of a finite number of terms involving powers and roots of the variable x and the four basic mathematical operations such as addition, subtraction, multiplication and division is called an algebraic function. There are two categories of algebraic functions. They are explicit and implicit algebraic functions. A function given the form of y equals f of x, say y equals f of x which is equal to 3x to the power 4 is called an explicit function because the variable y is explicitly expressed as a function of x. So a polynomial function is also a type of explicit function. On the other hand, a function in which the dependent variable is not isolated on one side of the equation is known as an implicit function. For example, the equation x square plus xy minus y square equals 1 represents an implicit function. Implicit functions are usually given in terms of both dependent and independent variables. Now what is a constant function? A function whose range, that is the set of values that y can take, consists of only one element is called a constant function. For example, y equals f of x equals 3 is a constant function. In this case, y takes only one value, that is 3. Now the value of y remains the same 
regardless of the value of x. If we plot a constant function on a coordinate plane, it will appear as a horizontal straight line. Let us plot the function y equals f of x equals 3 on a graph. On plotting the function y equals 3, we can see that it is a horizontal straight line parallel to the x-axis. Now let us discuss what is a polynomial function. A polynomial function is a function involving only non-negative integer powers of x. Now non-negative integers are 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on. Negative integers are minus 1, minus 2, minus 3 and so on. While positive integers are 1, 2, 3 and so on. So a non-negative integer powers of x implies that x can have an exponent of 0, 1, 2 and so on. The word polynomial means multi-term and a polynomial function of a single variable x has the general form y equals a subscript 0 plus a subscript 1x plus a subscript 2x square and so on. Each term has a coefficient such as a subscript 0, a subscript 1, a subscript 2 and a non-negative integer power of the variable x such as x to the power 0, x to the power 1, x to the power 2 and so on. Depending on the highest power of the independent variable x, there are several subclasses of polynomial function. If the highest power of the function is 0, that is n is equal to 0, then we have a constant function. Hence, the constant function discussed earlier is also a subclass of polynomial function. If y equals a subscript 0, x to the power 0 or y equals a subscript 0, then the function is a constant function. Next, if the highest power of a polynomial function is 1, that is n equals 1, then we have a linear function. If y equals a subscript 0, x to the power 0 plus a subscript 1, x to the power 1 or y equals a subscript 0 plus a subscript 1 x, then the function is a linear function. If we plot a linear function on a coordinate plane, it will appear as a straight line. Let us graph the following linear functions on a coordinate plane. The function y equals 2x plus 7 is in the form of y equals a subscript 0 plus a subscript 1 x. a subscript 0 is the y-intercept that is the point at which the line cuts the y-axis and a1 is the slope of the function. The value of a subscript 0 is 7 and the value of a1 is 2. On plotting the function y equals 2x plus 7, we can see that the straight line cuts the y-axis at 0, 7 and since the value of a subscript 1 equals 2 is positive, the function has an upward sloping curve. On plotting the function, we can see that a straight line cuts the y-axis at 0, 3 and since the value of a subscript 1 equals 5 is positive, the function has an upward sloping curve. On plotting the function y equals minus 4x plus 5, we can see that the straight line cuts the y-axis at 0, 5 and since the value of a subscript 1 equals minus 4 is negative, the function has a downward sloping curve. On plotting the function y equals minus 2x, we can see that the straight line cuts the y-axis at 0, 0 and since the value of a subscript 1 equals minus 2 is negative, the function has a downward sloping curve. If the highest power of a polynomial function is 2, that is n equals 2, then we have a quadratic function. If y equals a subscript 0 plus a subscript 1x plus a subscript 2x square, then the function is a quadratic function. If we plot a quadratic function on a coordinate plane, it will appear as a parabola, that is a curve with a single built-in bump or wiggle. A quadratic function has only one turning point. On plotting the quadratic function on a coordinate plane, if the value of a subscript 2 is positive, then the shape of 
the curve will be in the form of a valley. However, if the value of a subscript 2 is negative, then the shape of the curve will be in the form of a hill. Let us plot the following functions on a coordinate plane. On plotting the function, we can see that the curve intersects the y-axis at 0, 0,5. Since the value of a subscript 2 equals 3 is positive, the shape of the function is in the form of a valley. On plotting the function y equals minus 4x square plus 5x minus 4, we can see that the function intersects the y-axis at the point 0, 0,5. Minus 4. And since the value of a subscript 2 equals minus 4 is negative, the shape of the function is in the form of a hill. Next, on plotting the function y equals 5x square plus 2, we can see that the function intersects the y axis at 0, 0. And since the value of a2 equals 5 is positive, the shape of the function is in the form of a valley. Next, on plotting the function y equals minus 3x square, we can see that the function intersects the y-axis at 0, 0. And since the value of a subscript 2 equals minus 3 is negative, the function is in the shape of a hill. If the highest power of a polynomial function is 3, that is n equals 3, then we have a cubic function. If y equals a subscript 0, plus a subscript 1x plus a subscript 2x square plus a subscript 3x cube then the function is a cubic function. If we plot a cubic function on a coordinate plane, it will have two wiggles. A cubic function could have up to two turning points. So here are the different types of polynomial functions based on the value of the exponent of x that is x to the power n. If n is equal to 0, then we have a constant function. If n is equal to 1, then we have a linear function. If n is equal to 2, then we have a quadratic function. If n is equal to 3, then we have a cubic function. If n is equal to 4, then we have a quadratic function and so on. Now let us discuss another type of algebraic functions, which is rational functions. A rational function is any function which can be written as the ratio of two polynomial functions where the polynomial functions in the denominator is not equal to zero. The general form of rational functions is written as f of x is equal to p of x by q of x. The domain of a rational function is the set of all values of x for which the denominator q of x is not equal to zero. For example, y equals 2x plus 1 by x squared plus 5x plus 3 is a rational function. A special rational function that has interesting application in economics is the function y equals a by x where a is a constant or x times y equals a which plots a rectangular hyperbola. The product of the two variables x and y is always a fixed constant a. The function may be used to represent a special demand curve for which the total expenditure p times q is constant at all levels of price. It may also be used to represent the average fixed cost or AFC curve. The AFC curve or average fixed cost curve must be a rectangular hyperbola because AFC times q that is average fixed cost times quantity produced of a product must be equal to TFC that is the total fixed cost which is a fixed constant since the fixed cost of a firm is always fixed. The rectangular hyperbola obtained by plotting the function y equals a by x or x times y equals a on a coordinate plane never touches either of the axes even if the curve is extended upward and to the right. As the value of x and y becomes very large, the curve will get closer and closer to the x-axis and y-axis but never actually touches it. Let us discuss another type of function that is non-algebraic functions or transcendental functions. All functions which are not algebraic are called transcendental functions. These functions include 
exponential functions, logarithmic functions and trigonometric functions. Let us look at the first type of non-algebraic functions. A function having a constant base and a variable exponent is called an exponential function. In other words, an exponential function is a function whose independent variable appears in the role of an exponent. For example, y equals b to the power x is an exponential function in which the base b is a constant and the exponent x is a variable. On plotting an exponential function on a coordinate plane, we get a continuous upward rising curve. In economics, exponential functions are useful for describing sharp increase and decrease in the value of dependent variable such as sharp increase in population growth rate or saving growth rate and so on. When a variable is expressed as a function of the logarithm of another variable, the function is referred to as logarithmic function. A logarithmic function is expressed as y equals log to the base a of x, where the base a is greater than 0 and not equal to 1. If we express the logarithmic function y equals log to the base a of x by the equation x equals a to the power y then it is an exponential function thus logarithmic and exponential functions are inverse functions that is if x is an exponential function of y then y is the logarithmic function of x although the base of logarithm can be any positive number other than one but most widely used bases are either 10 also known as common logarithms or e equals 2.718 also known as natural logarithms. By convention logx denotes the common logarithm of x and lnx denotes natural logarithm of x. If any other base is meant it is specified. On plotting the logarithmic function on a coordinate plane we will get an upward rising curve. A logarithmic function is an upward rising curve which rises at a decreasing rate. Let us now discuss another type of non-algebraic functions known as trigonometric functions. Trigonometric functions also called circular functions are real functions which relate an angle of a right angle triangle to ratios of two side lengths. The most widely used trigonometric functions are the sine, the cosine and the tangent. In economics, the trigonometric functions are very useful in the study of business cycles, seasonal or other cyclic variations which are described by sine or cosine functions. On plotting the sine function and cosine function on a coordinate plane, we get curves which are wave-like movements. So these are the different types of functions and their graphs.